Welcome back to our next installation of notes. Today we are going to focus on the properties of water. Last set of notes we really focused just on the structure of water and why that structure is so unique for water and due to that structure it gives water all of these unique properties which are actually fascinating. Um, there's eight that we're going to talk about today, but before we even dive in, I want to just sort of remind you that the reason water has all of these unique properties is due to its polarity. Remember that polarity is that idea that the hydrogen molecules are positive, more positive than the oxygen molecule that is found in um, an H2O, right, a water molecule, and due to the differences in, right, the positive and the negative, um, it gives it that structure called polarity, and due to that, it gives it the ability to perform these eight water properties. So let's dive into what they are and what they do. So water is neutral. And maybe you've heard these terms before, right? The pH scale. This is how you determine how acidic or how basic or alkaline a solution is. Uh, maybe you've heard of like adding acids to your cooking, like you add lemon juice to um, increase a flavor profile. Well, a lemon is actually very acidic. Zero on the pH scale is the most acidic um, you can be, and 14 is the complete opposite end of the pH scale, and that's the most basic or the most alkaline you can be. So your stomach is incredibly acidic, right? Um, that's what allows uh, your stomach to really break down uh, a lot of the food you eat. So anything less than seven is considered acidic. The closer you get to zero, the more acidic it is. And then anything above seven is basic and the closer you get to 14, the more basic you become. But seven, seven is what we care about right now, right? It's right smack dab in the middle and it's neutral. And that's where water is. So water is a neutral substance. That's super important. Um, it means that it doesn't add any, you know, acids or bases to whatever it's added to. It's neutral. We love that about water. So very important for other properties. So getting into the eight properties of water themselves, the first two sort of go together, but slightly different. They are cohesion and adhesion. And cohesion is the idea that water sticks to water. Water loves itself and it wants to be around itself. So water will automatically stick to itself when put with other water molecules, right? And we learned that the last set of notes, right? They bond to each other with hydrogen bonds. So cohesion, they stick to it itself. Adhesion is water sticking to other things. So think about um, water sticking to your countertop or to uh, a window when it's raining outside, right? Water will stick to it and it will slide down um, the glass if you're like driving in a car or just looking out the window, but it will stick to the water. It doesn't automatically get repelled off. So cohesion sticks to itself adhesion sticks to other things. The next two properties of water kind of deal with that, like building off of cohesion and adhesion. So capillary action is similar to adhesion, right? Water's attraction to other surfaces like glass, or in this case, we're looking at a plant over here, because water can stick to the stem of a plant, it allows water to actually flow against gravity. So that's how water is taken up by roots and pulled all the way up through a stem and then out to leaves or evaporated off the top. But because water can stick to other surfaces, it can go against gravity. So even though capillary action is similar to adhesion, the key here is that it can flow against gravity. Okay, and then high surface tension kind of deals with um, cohesion again. So because those hydrogen bonds connect water to water, um, they are weak, right? They're, they're weak hydrogen bonds, but they're strong enough to resist low level force. So like little tiny bugs, like these water striders right here, 
they can actually walk on water because the uh, bonds between the water molecules are strong enough for them, right? We can't walk on water because we're a little bit too heavy, to, to, we're a little bit too forceful um, on those bonds, but really light insects or like leaves, right? You've seen leaves float on water and that's because the strength of the bonds between the water molecules are strong enough to resist that low level force, All right? Moving on to the next two, both of these deal with temperature. So moderating temperature, water just doesn't change temperatures easily. It takes a lot of heat to increase or decrease the temperature of water. So this is why even though when you go to like the beach in you know the middle of July and it's like 100 degrees outside, the water in the ocean is still cool and refreshing. And it's because it takes so much temperature um, I mean, sorry, so much heat to actually change the amount of temperature, change the temperature of the water. This is the same thing as if you're like boiling a pot of water, um, you know, to make like macaroni and cheese or something. It takes a lot of heat to actually get that water boiling. It doesn't just automatically happen. It takes some time. And this is actually very helpful um, because it prevents like super outrageous changes um, in, you know, our atmosphere. And then the sixth property of water is evaporative cooling. And this is homeostasis at work, okay? This is, um, this is why when we sweat, it actually cools our body off. And that is because when you sweat, you're actually releasing heat to break those water bonds, those hydrogen bonds between water. So picture this as like um, your skin or something. And then as you are sweating out the water, as these hydrogen bonds break off from each other, the breaking of this bond releases energy, but the energy is in the form of heat. And so when the bond breaks, the heat is released and evaporates off when the water evaporates off and it actually cools you down when the bond breaks. So that is why when you sweat, it cools you off. And our last two properties of water and the last bit of notes for today um, is density and universal solvent. So getting into density, just the definition of density is the amount of matter in a given volume. So when you're thinking of like, well, I'm just going to use this example that's in the picture. When you're thinking of like ice in water, ice is less dense than liquid water, right? Even though ice is water. Ice, water in the form of ice is less dense than liquid water. This is why when you like go to a restaurant, all of the ice in your drink floats at the top because it's less dense. So it will um, flow on the more dense liquid water. Okay. And then universal solvent is our last thing. And I know you've all seen this, um, like when you're making Kool-Aid or you're making like pink lemonade in the summer, that's what I like to make. Um, when you mix in that powdered part of the drink into water, it will dissolve. And that's because water can dissolve more substances than any other liquid. Water is a universal solvent. This is why we shower in water because it can dissolve any type of um, like dirt or soil that you have on you. Um, same thing with washing laundry, um, it's done in water. So water is called a solvent because that is the liquid that things are getting dissolved in and the substances that are getting dissolved, so the substances that go into the water to get dissolved are called solutes. These are two terms that you should be familiar with. So I would underline or highlight or something, but water is a solvent which dissolves things and what gets dissolved are called solutes. And an example of that would be sugar or salt or that Kool-Aid mix, whatever it may be. All right, great job. I'll see you in class and we'll start practicing with all these properties of waters.